What's going on guys, JSGC here, and we are here for another video, something a little bit different. We're going to be discussing how much the Manchester City players may be worth in this current transfer market window. So we're looking at all of the players that Manchester City that have currently got there in and around their first team, including some of the young players that are there. We'll have a look at their value and see how much I might think that they are worth, and then in the comments you can believe below how much you think that these players are worth. So we're going to crack on with the list. We're going to start off with the goalkeepers. And we're going to start off with Manchester City's number one, Edison. Now, in the market, worth. we're looking at Alisson, the other Brazilian goalkeeper, obviously. He'd been worth around uh, 60 to £65 million. Pounds. And in Edison, young goalkeeper, fantastic season with Manchester City last season. Established himself as Man City's number one goalkeeper. And he's going to be Man City's number one goalkeeper for many years to come. Uh, and so we've got to be looking at the same price as what Alisson's worth, if not more. So I valued him at around £60 million. Pound. Whether Manchester City would sell for that price is another matter. Now we're moving on to Claudio Bravo, which is a little bit more interesting this one because I imagine come the next season or two, Claudio Bravo probably won't be at Manchester City. So we have to look at how much do Man City now value Claudio Bravo at. He didn't have a great first season. He came back strong, though, after being made the second-choice goalkeeper at Manchester City. Obviously helped Manchester City along with winning a, cup, a penalty shootout in the League Cup too. He had a strong season last season. I would personally value him at around £5 to £10 million. Pounds. I'd be more than happy to accept that because I think Man City could sign themselves back up goalkeeper with that one and also allows Man City to maybe even make a couple of million pounds from signing another goalkeeper. Next up we've got Joe Hart. I value him at absolutely nothing because I know that Manchester City are looking to try and get as much money as possible for him. The realistic situation though with his current wages is that they're going to get no fee for him which means his value is currently nothing. When he moves to his next club and he signs a new contract obviously he's got one year left at Man City but when he goes to his new club um, it will obviously be worth more money, but at the moment I'm fairly certain that Man City would accept no money for him. Next up, we're dealing with goalkeeper is our third choice goalkeeper Daniel Grimshaw, and it's absolutely impossible to know how much he's worth. He hasn't played for Manchester City, hasn't been out on loan, he hasn't proven himself anywhere, so it's impossible to know what standard he's at and how much money he's worth. And also, the same goes with Murich, but Murich is going out on loan to NAC Breda. He's going to have a season, and so come next season, we'll probably have some kind of value for him. What that may be, you'd imagine it'd probably be somewhere. Uh, below double figures because you, you know young goalkeeper but you never know Angus Gunn managed to only have one season out on loan and all of a sudden Manchester City were able to get 13 and a half million pounds for him it's amazing what a year on loan can do next we're going to move on to the defenders and we're looking at this time at Benjamin Mendy we're going to start with so I value Benjamin Mendy at currently around what we paid for him because he hasn't really done that much at Man City since picking up his injury you can see the classes there so I valued him at around 50 million pounds Danilo up next very interesting this one because he's in the similar bracket as what you'd think with Claudio Bravo. Is he going to be at Man City in the next season or two? So again, I value him at the same as what I'd value Claudio Bravo at, which means I'd probably accept a bid of around five to ten million pounds, taking in their age, where they're from, into factor when deciding the price. Next up, very interesting is Fabian Delve. Now, what money would you consider for Fabian Delph? I was thinking, I was ooming and R and I was thinking, realistically, I'd accept somewhere between 10 and 15 million pounds for him. I think he's had a solid season last season. However, um, he's not getting any younger now. He's obviously going to be a squad rotated player at Manchester City. He slotted in at left back, which suited him really well last season. However, uh, season before that one, you'd probably be saying he's valued at five to ten million pounds. So I'd say that somewhere between ten and fifteen million pounds is probably quite realistic at this moment in time. But with him being English, and if he has another solid season, you'd expect that value to go up at least by a little bit. Next up is Kyle Walker, the exact same as Benjamin Mendy, apart from he's had a fantastic uh, campaign with Manchester City. Again, he's not getting any younger though. He's not the youngest player that Man City's ever signed. He's not the oldest player that Man City's ever signed. But with him being English, with him being an England starter, with him being a Manchester City starter, you got to be at least looking for around £50 million for a defender like Kyle Walker and I'd personally value him uh, ish up with the same price that we bought him for which is that of £50 million. Next up is Vincent Company, and Vincent Company to me is absolutely priceless. I won't put a price on him. I would let Vincent Company leave. There's only a several, couple of players at Manchester City that I'd have this with. Vincent Company has shown tremendous loyalty to Manchester City, tremendous patience. He's worked so hard and he's earned himself the captain's uh, armband and he's earned himself the title of being a legend at Manchester City and he deserves to uh, pick and choose when he wants to leave, not Man City choosing when they want him to leave. Nicholas Otamendi for me, if I'm completely honest, you're probably going to disagree with this, but if Man City received a bid of around £30 million, I'd be quite tempted to accept. Uh, I know that Man City uh, may well be in a de mar the market for a defender come next summer. Manchester City are going to be looking for gaps. 
company and Otamendi are obviously the two players that are getting no younger that you're probably looking at Man City might be looking for a long term replacement for. So if Man City managed to get some serious money, like around £30 million for Nicholas Otamendi, I'd seriously consider it. Next up is John Stones. Now, I'd have valued him again at around what we bought him for, so around £50 million. But because he's had such a solid World Cup campaign, he's been put into... Uh, obviously, everyone's talking about him. We know how good John Stones can be. Hopefully, he's found his form of what he found at the beginning of last season, and he'll be able to take that into the new season. So I've upped his price a little bit. Obviously, the market's a little bit more inflated since Man City ended up signing John Stones. So I put him at £60 million. Laporte, I've put at £50 million. No particular reason why, but he's just a young player. He's had a solid few months at Manchester City. He's looked very comfortable. He's a good passer. He's versatile. He's got a very good player. So for me, I'd value him again at around £50 million. Next up is Manglo, a player that you would expect to leave Manchester City. Uh, I've put it £5 million, but let's face it, if Man City ended up getting any kind of money offer for him, they're probably going to accept that. And Jason Denier is the exact same. Again, I put £5 million down, but again, if Man City receive any kind of money cash offer for him that's serious and they're willing to take him off Man City's wage bill, they're probably going to accept. And last but not least to the defenders, I've gone for Toshin Adarabi Yoyo. And again, he needs a loan. He needs some experience under his belt. We need to know his standard, his league, how good he is, because he could go out and loan to a championship club. He could be superb, and you know for a fact that he's going to be a Premier League defender and his value would go up or he could go to the Championship, make several mistakes, end up flopping and you realise that he's actually a League 1, League 2 type player at this moment in time and obviously his value will go down so it's impossible to know until that move ends up happening. Will he go out on loan or not this season though? I highly much doubt. We'll move on to the midfielders now we're going for Fernandinho. Fernandinho's getting no younger, Manchester City probably aren't going to sell so I just slapped £20 million on because let's face it, if someone bid £20 million for someone that's I think 33 years old, you're probably going to take that. Uh, Gundogan, I've put us 40 to 50 million pound. I know there's interest from Barcelona and Man City are probably going to up that price. So, like I said, if Man City ended up getting a bid from Barcelona for around 50 million pound, it'd be interesting to see how Man City responded to that and if they'd uh, be willing to take up the test. Next up is Kevin De Bruyne, absolutely priceless at Manchester City, but he's not one of them players that's been at Man City long enough for me to say that he's priceless. So, if you wanted me to throw a price on him, I'd probably say around 150 million pound. I've seen Aiden Hazard linked with that, and uh, Aiden Hazard to Chelsea is what De Bruyne is to Manchester City. He's so influential, high profile, a world class fantastic football player that probably can't be replaced so you're looking for serious amounts of money you're looking for record types of money that the Premier League probably hasn't seen just yet but we will end up seeing it one day uh, so I chucked 150 million pound there and if I'm honest I'd probably reject that too because he's just uh, completely awesome how man's it going to top that we can't and uh, you know he's still relatively young next up David Silva He's got the same price as what Vincent Company has. He's priceless. He isn't going to leave Manchester City till his contract's up. Man City aren't going to sell him. He's one of them players that's earned the right for him to decide when he wants to leave Manchester City. Next up's Phil Foden. I can't give a price on Phil Foden. Again, I don't know how good Phil Foden's going to be for me to be able to put a price on him. It, again, he's going to need more game time. Man City aren't going to loan him out. It'd be interesting if he gets a few starts under his belt and if he starts getting a goal or two where Phil Foden could end up. We'll have to wait and see how Manchester City do handle uh, him this coming season and same with Brahim Diaz. Are we going to loan him or not? I'm not too sure. At the moment, it doesn't seem likely, but things change quickly in the transfer market. I can't put a value on Brahim Diaz. Again, I feel like he needs more minutes, more game time. If he impresses for Manchester City at any one point, his value will go up, obviously. But if he ends up going out on loan, being impressive, then Manchester City might be looking at the type of deal that we ended up doing with uh, Pablo Maffeo, which was ending up being around £10 million, if you remember. Next up, Riyad Mahrez. Again, we're just going to shove £60 million. They were just paid £60 million for him. He hasn't played any games for Manchester City, so how his value can go up or down, it can't. So I put £60 million. Ryan Sterling, again, I've put £60 million down for. I'd say he's just as important to Manchester City as what Riyad Mahrez is at this moment in time. Basically, Ryan Sterling, he just needs to continue with consistency. If he can continue scoring goals and getting assists for Manchester City as season after season, that value will only go up with him being English. And with him still being relatively young, his value can go up. At the moment, I put £60 million. Man City probably would want more than that, you'd imagine. Next up is Bernardo Silva. I'd value him at around £40 to £50 million. Bernardo Silva, I don't feel like Man City's got the best out of him just yet. I feel like Man City's used him a lot as a squad player. It'd be interesting to see over the next season or two if he ends up developing into a first-team player. If he does, then I imagine if he's good enough for Man City's first team, the value will go up. If he ends up just being a squad player, which is what like Gundogan is, then you'd probably expect Bernardo Silva, with the age that he's been at, to 
maybe leave and Man City will probably be looking for serious money and they'll be looking to profit so like I said around 50 million pounds maybe even more next up's Leroy Sane I've gone for 100 million pound I've compared this to Uzuman Dembele he's around a similar age both got similar prospects Leroy Sane is an absolutely fantastic world class football player he should have gone to the World Cup with Germany there's absolutely no doubt about that his value should be skyrocketing it pains me to see Kylian Mbappe doing so well at the World Cup and I'm thinking that if Germany were willing to just give Leroy Sane the chance on the big stage on the world stage and let him shine it would have been interesting to see how he coped and what he could have done trust me he couldn't have done any worse than what the Germany side did he must be laughing to himself he really must but with Man City he's so young so quick so powerful he's got all the potential there to become absolutely world class and become one of the best players in the world whilst at Manchester City so you're looking for serious amounts of money I put 100 million pound there because it's an extraordinary amount of money and if I'm being completely honest like Kevin De Bruyne even if we got offered that money I probably still wouldn't accept it but I have to put him price there that's, that's reasonable i'm not going to say oh he's worth 300 400 million pounds when just simply that you know no one's worth 300 400 million pounds this market as of yet i'm sure we'll get there one day though next up's patrick roberts interesting in this one because he is wanted in real life leicester want him for around 10 million pound and to be honest 10 million pounds is right at the bottom of my value for him i'd value him at between 10 and 15 million pound he's still a relatively young player he's very skillful he suffered an injury setback last season but the season before that he was superb for celtic obviously that's where he's value comes from and it'd be interesting if a team is willing to give him first team football his value would obviously shoot up an option for Man City here would be to loan him as long as he's going to get guaranteed starting time at a decent club in a decent league his value could shoot up and 10 million in my opinion is perhaps on the low side next up Zinchenko again I put around 10 to 15 million pound it looks like Man City may well even get more if they decide to sell him this summer he's had a fantastic season last season took his opportunity when he was given the opportunity he's a player with the right attitude always has a smile on his face he's still young he's a very good football player it'd be interesting to see how he played if he could start every single game in a Premier League season there's talk of Wolves there's talk of Fulham there's talk of 16 million pounds there's talk of even more money so Man City in my opinion getting a very good deal if they do end up deciding to sell Zinchenko we'll move on to the strikers quickly now uh, and we'll move on to Sergio Aguero Sergio Aguero is nearly in that stage of what David Silva and Vincent Company are at it's just I'd say he's the most realistic player to leave Manchester City out than players that I just mentioned he's a player that's always felt like he's at Manchester City but he's like his desires are always to be somewhere else and once a club comes in with a serious amount of money Manchester City'd have to consider it and Manchester City'd probably change their style of play to sign someone that would suit their system better. I'm not saying that Sergio Aguero doesn't suit Man City's system, he does. It's just I've always got that feeling that Sergio Aguero one day will leave Manchester City and I don't feel like it will be on a free contract. I feel like Man City will probably cash in. You're asking me to value him. At this moment in time, a consistent 20-plus goal striker in the Premier League, no matter of what age, he's probably still got another two, three, four seasons capable of doing that. He scores gold. I'd probably value him at around 40 to 50 million pounds. You have to. He's a goal scorer, proven, and he's been fantastic every season that he's been at Manchester City and in the Premier League. And if a Premier League club came in for him, you'd probably be asking for the top end of that. So you'd be looking at around 50 million pounds. And I'd be very surprised if Premier League clubs didn't come in for him because he guarantees instant success. Next up's Namicha. I can't give a price on him. I've not seen enough of him to give a price on him. Again, he needs a loan. He's getting linked with loan moves. He's getting linked with being around the Man City first team. It'd be interesting to see where he ends up next season. I'm interested to see how Man City do with their youngster policy and see how much these players are worth. Obviously, like I said before, if they have a good loan campaign and their value is going to go up, if they end up having their playtime limited or they end up having a bad loan spell, then obviously the value will go down. Man City need to manage these youngsters extra carefully because these youngsters are very good football players. They don't want to be uh, suffering from a bit of bad management there. And last but not least... Probably the most interesting is Gabriel Jesus. Now, if a club from La Liga in particular, because I know he's had interest from La Liga, particularly with uh, Barcelona, who's come sniffing round before, you're asking me how much would I value Jesus at if they came in with a bid for him. I've been impressed with Jesus. I don't think he's an out-and-out -out striker. I don't think he's the replacement we're looking for with Sergio Aguero. I think he's just another option there that just happens to be very good. Now, obviously, he's been criticised at the World Cup. I was hoping that he'd go out and bang at the World Cup and score gold because obviously he scores quite a lot of gold in the qualifying for Brazil, but that just wasn't meant to be. That doesn't matter. doesn't take the value down, in my opinion. It'd be interesting to see if a, bit, a team did come in what they'd test Man City with. I reckon they'd probably try and test us with £50 million. And in my complete honest opinion, I'd value him at a lot more than that. I'd probably be looking at around £70 to £80 million for Gabriel Jesus. He's a young player. He's got all the attributes there to be a fantastic football player. 
I feel like if he doesn't end up settling down at Manchester City or he wants to move, he's at that age where he might want to move, like Leroy Sané, he might want to move and go to another club. Uh, La Liga normally suits Brazilian players. I feel like a team, if they were willing to pay that money, would probably pay it for him. So I feel like Man City would probably want to cash in on that and make a big profit. And why wouldn't Man City want to double the price that they ended up paying for Gabriel Jesus and more? You're free to disagree with these uh, comments that I've made, by the way. Like I said, if you do, don't forget to leave that in the comments below what you feel like these players are worth. It's just a bit of fun. I just wanted to have a look at ish how much you think Man City's squad's worth and where you think players are at. And it also gives a good opportunity to identify players' ages and possible areas to improve in the future, including next transfer window, obviously, next summer, looking further ahead. But there we go. It's been something new. I thought I'd throw something uh, in there. To go along with the transfer video, something that's linked in with Man City and transfers that isn't a transfer update. So if you did enjoy the video, don't forget to leave a big thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video and you enjoyed this similar style of video and you want to see more, like I said, let me know. Leave that in the comments below. Social media links there in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe if you are new around here. We're aiming, obviously, now for 10,000 subscribers. I'm not going to keep counting it down, but I am going to say that if you could subscribe to my channel, support my channel, and subscribe with notifications on to be notified when I upload my football videos, then please do. We've got lots of manchester city content coming up so if you're a fan it is worthwhile subscribing to my channel and i'll see you all again for the next manchester city video so it's been jsgc i hope you have a wonderful rest of your day i'm going to leave the links up to my other channels go check them out like and subscribe check out my other videos and i'll see you all in a bit it's been jsgc hope you have a wonderful rest of your day peace ciao for now